Unlucky Boy gets a new maid but she reveals herself to be a former assassin. Living his normal student life, one day Hitoyoshi Yokoya receives a visit from a maid who claims to be an assassin and is looking to be hired. As she walks towards the Yokoya residence, the woman's tiara jingles with every step, making noise wherever she goes. Meanwhile, the boy in his terribly messy room sleeps like a rock. When the doorbell rings, Hitoyoshi sluggishly drags himself downstairs and checks the entry camera to see who's at the door. Outside, a beautiful woman apologizes for the intrusion but expresses her desire to be hired as the housemaid. He invites her in, immediately apologizing for the mess and explaining that his parents are away. As he grabs something to drink from the kitchen, he starts to realize that he let a complete stranger into his home without thinking, so he tries to stay polite while eyeing her suspiciously. In his mind, she might be trying to sell something or propose something illegal, so his best bet is to stall until he can figure out how to send her away. He asks if she's worked as a maid before, to which she replies that she has, but her previous jobs were a bit different. They involved executing traitors who had betrayed her former employer. In fact, she's here because of a recommendation from that very employer. Hideyoshi thinks the woman must be joking, but part of him is sure she isn't, and fear starts to creep over him. At this point, getting this stranger out of the house isn't just a matter of politeness, it's a necessity. He then asks if she has any connection to his family since she came on a recommendation. The maid explains that Hidoyoshi is the grandson of the woman who once lived in the house of the second son of the cousin of the wife of the heir to her employer. Instinctively, Hitoyoshi blurts out that he's practically a stranger to this employer, but quickly tries to correct his posture so as not to offend her. Trying to shift the conversation, he asks what kind of execution she specializes in. To demonstrate, she takes the young man outside and uses a tree as a target, throwing sharp metal projectiles at the trunk. Realizing she's not messing around, he makes it clear that he doesn't want her to kill anyone and that he doesn't even know this employer she mentioned, so he won't be hiring her. She understands and apologizes for taking up his time, then leaves without causing further trouble. Hitoyoshi wonders if it was all just a dream, but soon notices something left behind in the grass. Oh. Meanwhile, on the other side of the story, the maid had already guessed the outcome would be no different. Her biggest problem now is figuring out where to go next. As she waits for the subway, she continues on her way, but soon Hitoyoshi appears running in the background, holding a bell in his hand. It's the bell from her tiara that had been left behind at his house. Distracted, Hitoyoshi runs to return the item but doesn't see the truck speeding across the road. In a flash of instinct, the maid pulls the boy out of the vehicle's path, saving his life. The driver curses the boy for his carelessness and drives off, while the girl admits she's never saved anyone's life like that before and her heart is pounding. A confused Hitoyoshi hands her the bell, and they say their goodbyes, each going their separate ways or at least that was the plan. The boy suddenly changes his mind saying he was actually looking for a maid and that she can work at his house after all. Without delay, she returns to the Yokoya residence and lays out an assortment of blades on the living room table, explaining that knives were likely the first tools used by humans and, though simple, can take a person's life when wielded correctly. Hitoyoshi interrupts the free lesson, explaining that he needs help with cleaning, not with that. The maid, thinking this is some kind of code for killing someone, asks who needs to be cleaned up. He points to the bags of trash in the room, hoping that's self-explanatory, but she interprets it as someone being inside one of those bags. Exasperated, Hitoyoshi makes it clear that he needs a real maid someone to sweep and mop the floors. With that settled, however, it becomes clear that she has absolutely zero skill when it comes to using a bucket and mop an utter disaster. At the very least, she manages to recover her balance when she slips in the water she spilled, but not before the bucket she threw into the air lands squarely on her head. Faced with this catastrophe, she wonders how she could possibly be hired after such poor work. Hitoyoshi removes the bucket from her head and takes the blame for asking her to do something she wasn't used to. Considering that, he offers to help her clean the house together. By late afternoon, the cleaning is a complete success, with everything in its rightful place. After hearing the young man's thanks, the maid seems awkward, as if she's not used to receiving that kind of appreciation. Hitoyoshi realizes it's getting late and that neither of them has had lunch, having been so focused on cleaning. He asks if the maid knows how to cook, but she responds with silence. So he reassures her that he's got the perfect meal for today and suggests she take a bath while she waits. In the bathtub, she finds herself thinking about the young man thanking her for her work. 
Meanwhile, in the living room, Hitoyoshi reflects that he should be enjoying his summer vacation with his parents away, but instead he's ended up with an assassin maid who can't clean or cook. But that's not the only thing on his mind if she decides to come out of the bathroom wrapped in just a towel he has no idea how he's going to handle that, so he mentally prepares himself for the possibility. But before he can gather his thoughts, the woman walks out of the bathroom fully dressed, shattering his illusion. She then sets herself to chopping cabbage for dinner, because if there's one thing she knows how to do, it's chop. Without delay, she tosses the vegetable in the air and shreds it into thousands of pieces, finishing the task without breaking a sweat. With that done, all that was left was to make some instant miso soup and serve it alongside the tonkatsu. Hearing this, the woman remarks that she wasn't quite sure what these dishes were, but it didn't matter much to her. After all her whole life, she had only eaten to sustain herself, never caring about taste or appearance. Moved by this sad situation, Hitoyoshi assures her she'd be surprised by the tonkatsu because it was made by the Katsuda couple, who'd been preparing the best food in the region for over 60 years, all at a very reasonable price. There were even rumors that famous people would disguise themselves just to buy from them. Despite the convincing pitch, the maid remains visibly unmoved, showing little excitement, which leaves him feeling a bit frustrated. But since that's how things were, he decided to show her firsthand what he was talking about. After splitting the tonkatsu between the two, he placed cabbage on their plates and served one to Misa, as he liked to call her. Taking advantage of the moment, he asks for her name, but she responds that she doesn't have one since she'd only ever been called whatever her employers decided, so the boy could call her whatever he wanted. Not being great with names, Hitoyashi decides to keep calling her maid. She reflects that she had never cared about what others called her before, but now something feels different. Regardless, the moment to eat finally comes, and Hitoyashi eagerly waits for her to try the food and give some feedback. When she takes a bite, the maid muses that, as always, nothing had changed. She couldn't tell whether the taste was good or bad, however, recalling a vague memory, she comments that the food was warm and pleasant. Inside, she reflects that the bath and the food were warm, just like the person standing before her. Hitoyoshi mentions that the room where she'd be staying is at the end of the hallway on the second floor, and that the bed linens had been properly laid out. But if something wasn't right, she should just let him know. The woman is surprised to see that the boy had prepared the room for her, and it carries her back to an old memory where she stood holding a machete. A man in the background said she had passed the test, adding that her skin was as white as snow and her heart was as cold as ice. On that day, this man had told her what her name was, but now she preferred to say she had none far better than being called Cold Woman. Hideyoshi interrupts her reflection to pass the tonkatsu sauce, saying it just wasn't the same without it. Without hesitation, she pours it over her food and takes a bite. The sensation is so delightful that even she can't contain her emotion and has to express her joy. Later, at 3 a.m. the next day, Hitoyoshi wakes up drenched in sweat after a dream he hadn't had in ages. Hit by a sudden midnight hunger, he decides to look for some instant ramen. But as he descends the stairs, he hears a strange noise coming from the kitchen. Startled, he remembers the maid had said she was a professional killer. Still, he musters the courage to check what is happening. Peeking into the kitchen, he sees the maid with a red stain on her face. At first, he thinks it is blood, but when she turns around, he realizes she is actually covered in tonkatsu sauce. Caught in the act, the woman apologizes profusely, but relieved that it is nothing serious, the house owner doesn't scold her. The maid explains that she thought if she were to die tomorrow, she'd at least like to taste that flavor one more time. Not wanting to limit her experience to just the tonkatsu, Hitoyoshi whips up an improvised fondue with the sauce since there isn't much else. To make it more fancy still, all the maid wants is to eat everything with the sauce she has come to love, and that's exactly what she does. After the meal, she asks if Hitoyoshi had a nightmare, as she'd heard him moaning in his room. Fearing he might be a killer too, she had taken the liberty of entering his room and found him calling for his mother repeatedly. The maid had also had a dream where she was talking to the tonkatsu sauce. The sauce said it was endless and no matter how much she licked, it would never run out. However, when she started eating, she woke up. At least her dream had been different this time, since she usually dreamt of bad things. That's why she felt sorry for the boy having such a troubling nightmare she knew all too well what that was like. Hitoyoshi shrugged it off, saying it was just a dream he had from time to time. In his mind, he replayed images from his childhood where he kept calling for his mother as she walked away. He explained that he could only sleep when lying in his mother's lap on nights when he had those nightmares. Hearing this, the maid found a way to comfort him and offered him her lap to rest on. Her mind wandered back to the man who always said she was born to kill. 
and that thought enveloped her soul in darkness. But when Hitoyoshi laid his head on her lap, the world around her became lighter. Both felt awkward with the situation, but neither of them backed out. They saw it through to the end. This is the end of You Are M's Servant, Episode 1. Thank you so much for staying on this channel and watching our videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you updated with our latest content. See you in the next video.